Well, I tell you what, it's it's good to be back, but you know, it 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 feels kind of odd. You know, we we've been away so so long, and you know, I was just thinking about that, and I was like, man, I just I cannot believe it. it's so surreal, isn't it? Uh, to think that you know we haven't met corporately since uh, June, and then that. You know, even since March, we've only been able to come together, you know, this is barely our fourth time in seven months, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? You know, but thank God that he's given us the grace, the strength, the perseverance <laughs> that we need, and so, but it, it's a joy, and so I want to thank you guys again for being here, and thank you again for, for tuning in online today. Uh, you know, a couple of things, you know, as you guys walked in here today, you can notice a couple of different things here. And as I mentioned to you all, you know, we had sustained some damage uh, through Hurricane Hannah. And so we need to do some renovations on the roof and in here as well. And, and so it was, it, was, it was time for that anyway. So it was a good opportunity to do that. But, uh, but so it looks a little bit differently, but we were, we're, we're glad that, <clears throat> that we're here. But I wanted to thank, you know, because it, it really took a whole bunch of people to help make this happen, to bring this together over the last couple of weeks. There was a lot of hard work that was being put into this. And so can we put a hand clap just for everybody who was a big part of that? And then I, I, I especially want to thank, you know, uh, two men who, you know, we, we, we've been serving together, you know, for the last 12, 13 years. And and that's Roland and Roy, and, and they just, um, I tell you what, the way they go above and beyond for this church always just humbles me, uh, how, how much they're willing to just give and, and serve the house of God. And so Roy and Ro Roland, thank you guys so much. <clears throat> and, 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 and tomorrow, don't forget, uh, Pastor Joan is hosting uh, a, a Bible study on Monday nights, and right now it's available on YouTube on Monday nights, and that happens at 7 o'clock. And so if you missed last week's, uh, it's happening again to, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. You go to our Facebook page, you'll find all the details there. And uh, she's really fired up about this study that she's doing. It's a five-week study, and so I know you're going to be blessed by it. And so look that up, and that happens on YouTube. But, but, but okay, again, good, good to have you guys here. You know, I had this, this statement in mind because, you know, I think that, you know, when we go through things like the, you know, some of the things that we're experiencing in our world today is that, you know, they're, they're hard times, they're challenging times. But, but one thing I've learned, my friends, is that, is that tough times come, but tough people outlast them. You know, tough times come. They're not going to last forever. Uh, but when you lean on God, when you lean on his strength, you'll be able to outlast whatever storms, whatever challenges, whatever pandemics all of a sudden come out of nowhere. And so, you know, over the last couple weeks, I have, um, I, I was doing a series on there's purpose in pain. And, and uh, I always have a, a lot more content left over from messages that I just kind of, I write notes on it and then I don't get to it. And, and so I said, you know what, I still had some more for this purpose and pain. So I'm going to give you one more message on this series. And, and so I'm going to give that to you here today. And, you know, I just really think it, it's relevant to us today because, you know, we've all experienced some kind of pain and, and, and in life we experience pain. And, but it, it's, it's, it's amazing to know that God will take that pain and use it for good. It, it's, it, God says, I'll cause all things to work together for good. Not some things, not a few things, all things. And so whatever crisis, whatever trials we face in life, there is hope, there's good news. God causes it to work together for our good. Amen? Amen. And so again, it's good to have you back. You know, I tell you what, not having you here was, was weird you know, you know, speaking to a wall was strange. I, I would get home and I said, babe, my message stunk today. I didn't hear one amen in the room at all. <laughs> and and so, so I had to picture that you were giving me amens on, 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 uh, online. But anyways, but I'm glad that you guys are here. And so this is what I'm going to do. I want to continue this series. One of the main statements that I shared with you with God uses pain to accomplish his purpose. God uses pain. God may not have caused the pain, but he will definitely use it to accomplish his purpose in your life. 
He'll use that pain. Whatever the enemy meant for harm, he says, I'll turn it around and I'll use it for your good. And so Paul, you know, Paul was no stranger to pain and and he suffered and endured many seasons of pain, but he came to understand that God used the pain to accomplish his purpose. I want you to listen to Paul's words here in Philippians chapter one, uh, verse 12. Listen to what it says. He says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has helped to advance the gospel. Listen to what Paul's saying. Now, Paul was in prison when he wrote this, and he comes to understand that there was a purpose to his pain. The purpose was that the good news of Christ and that God's kingdom was, going, was advancing through his pain. Paul said, in essence, because of his circumstance and because he was in this moment of in, in prison it, and he was being strong in the midst of it, he said it was bringing encouragement to other people. It was giving other people a sense of boldness and a sense of fearlessness to go and keep doing what they were doing because they thought to themselves, if Paul is there, in prison, and he is encouraging us, and we are outside of prison, then surely we can go and encourage somebody else. You see, Paul said, because of his circumstances, he says something good was coming out of it. God used what happened to Paul to bring something good. In the same way, God will use the pain that you go through to bring something good from it. The enemy may have meant it for harm, but God will use it for good. Do you know that, that four of the 13 letters that Paul wrote that we read in the New Testament, the four of those letters, he wrote them while he was in prison. He wrote those letters of encouragement to the churches while he was in prison. The next time that you read through Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, or Philemon, Think about how Paul was writing these letters of encouragement while he was in prison. Some of the things that he wrote while he was in prison, you might be familiar with. From prison, Paul wrote this, rejoice in the Lord always. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but instead pray about everything and give God thanks first. And he says, and then the peace of God will come and it'll guard your mind and it'll guard your heart. Sitting in a jail cell, Paul wrote, brothers and sisters, watch this, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Just think about that. He is in prison. He's locked up. He's in a cell. And he is saying, he says, I know I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm going to forget all the things of yesterday and I'm going to keep on fighting and I'm going to keep on pressing on. <laughs> While in prison, Paul wrote, bear with each other and forgive anyone who offends you. Forgive as the Lord forgave you you. I mean, just think about that. I don't know about you, but, but that challenge challenges me to step up my game. Just listening to Paul bring that encouragement while he's, he's locked up, while he's in chains, while he's in prison. It, it, it challenges me. It encourages me to, hey, you know, if Paul was able to get through this through his faith in Christ, then God's grace will be sufficient for me as well. Tough times come, but tough people outlast them. Tough times don't last forever. What Paul discovered in prison, my friends, is that there's purpose in your pain. God uses pain to accomplish his purpose. Paul's pain made him stronger, and it brought hope and encouragement to others. I want you to think about your life. Think about how, how the pain that you're, you've gone through, the pain that you're going through, is bringing encouragement to somebody else. And you say, well, how's that? You see, your faithfulness to God during a season of pain is helping other people to have faith in God. You see, when you, when you have an enduring faith through a season of pain and, and your family members and the people around you see you, 
continuing to worship God, see you continuing to, to lift up prayers to God, it touches their heart and it encourages them in their faith in God. Your willingness to forgive someone else who hurt you is helping other people to forgive. Your generosity towards God in a pandemic is helping others to trust God as well. See, God, God uses the pain to accomplish his purpose, not only in your life, but to touch somebody else's life. You know, it reminds me of, of the account of of Lazarus, and all of us are familiar with what happened when Lazarus, Jesus raised him from the dead. But, but if you if you if you look at the story, remember the scripture says that that they came to Jesus and said, "Jesus, your friend is sick and he's dying." And 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 see, Jesus was close to Lazarus. They they they, they were friends. They were like family. But the scripture says that when Jesus heard this, that he didn't immediately get up and run to where Lazarus was. No, it took him a couple days. He took his time to get there. By the time he gets there, Lazarus' sister comes out to Jesus and she says to him, what happened? Didn't we send word to you that your friend was sick and he was dying? And Jesus said to her, he said, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Show me where Lazarus is. Is And so he goes to Lazarus' tomb, tomb, and as you understand, he, he says to Lazarus, come out, and Lazarus comes out. But this is what happened. You see, Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if, that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? See, what happened, my friends, is the, the Bible describes how there was a crowd that was gathering around when, when Lazarus had died. There was a crowd that had gathered. Maybe. Jesus was waiting for that crowd because somebody in that crowd needed to know that God was a miracle worker. Maybe somebody in that crowd needed to know that God is still the one who can make a way even when it looks like there is no way. Maybe there was somebody in that crowd that needed to know that Jesus is who he said he is. And so God used that season of pain, that moment of pain, not only in Lazarus' life, but in his family's life to not only bring glory to God, but that glory that he brought to God, it brought other people to faith in God. You see, when you believe, when you have faith in God, it, bring, it, brings, God's glory. it brings God glory. When you have faith in God, it brings him glory. And when God shows himself out in your life, other people see the glory of God and it helps them to believe in God as well. What I'm trying to tell you, my friends, is there's purpose in your pain. God uses pain to accomplish his purpose. Now here, really quickly, I want to share four truths with you that I believe will help you through a season of pain and suffering. We all go through moments, we all go through times, and, and all of us together as a world, we're going through one of those moments today, but, but I believe we can hold on to these truths and they'll help us. And here's the first one, is that God will restore you. When you go through a season of pain, it's not the end, it's not over. God has promised to bring restoration to your life. Listen to what he says here in 1 Peter. He says, and the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. In other words, my friends, God is going to bring you out of that season of pain. And not only is he going to bring you out, he's also going to restore you and make you stronger and more steadfast. You see, you're going to come out of this thing stronger than you went into it. I don't know about you, but I believe that we are going to come out of 2020 stronger than we came into it. I tell you, I wonder what God is up to through in this, during this season. I wonder what God's purpose and how God is going to bring himself glory through this situation that we're all in. Last week, I talked to you about how Joseph suffered through a season of pain but it was temporary. See, God brought him out of the pit and promoted him to the palace. 
The scripture describes how, how God restored Joseph and he caused things to work together for his good. Now, when Joseph had come out of that season, Joseph had two sons and he gave his two sons two very unique names that meant something. And this, these were his names. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, and this is what this name meant. It is because God has made me forget all my troubles. You see, Joseph went through a season of pain, but God made him forget all his troubles. And, 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 and you will go, we and I will go through seasons of pain. And when we're in it, we don't see the end in sight. But once we come out of it, my friends, God, just like with Joseph, God is going to make you forget some of that pain and the suffering that you experience. He named his second son Ephraim and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. So even in his pain, even in his suffering, God was at work doing something in Joseph's life, and he made him fruitful. And in the same way, my friends, you and I may go through pain, but God is going to make us forget that pain, and he is going to make us come out more fruitful than we went into it. See, God is at work in your life even when you don't see it. God restored what the enemy had taken from Joseph, and he will do the same for you. Here's the second truth that I think we can hold on to when we're in pain. And he said, all pain is temporary. Pain is temporary. You see, some seasons of pain are longer than others, but all pain is temporary. Tough times come, but they're not going to last forever. Second Corinthians chapter four gives us some, some insight as to what to focus on when you're going through pain. This is what scripture says. It says, for our light, And momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You see, amen, I'm not preaching to myself no more. I I hear some hand claps. I hear some amens. Praise the Lord. God answered my prayers. No. no. And so, but what's, what's God saying, my friends? He says, your current struggle and suffering is producing an eternal glory that still is, there's an eternal glory that still lies ahead. God tells us to fix our eyes, not on what is seen, not, not on the struggle, not on the pain, not on the suffering, but instead to fix our eyes on what is unseen, to think about what still lies ahead. You see, one of the things that helps us get through pain is to think about eternal things. Is to they see that this eternal glory that God's talking about here is is the eternal glory of heaven, and God says to us to look ahead to that in a moment of pain. That's what Paul and the disciples did. They they, they lifted up their eyes and they looked ahead to the glory, to the victory, to what still was waiting for them in heaven. Why, my friends? Because the Scripture says that in the heavens there is no more pain. See, that's why I tell you, pain is temporary. It's it's not going to last forever. In In the heavens, there is no more pain. There is no more crying. There is no more suffering. We don't experience the struggle that we experience here. And so God says, fix your eyes on that because it will actually help you to keep pushing. It'll help you to keep fighting. It will help you to keep pressing on. You see... Our greatest accomplishments and successes do not compare to the eternal glory that awaits us in heaven. Our greatest hope is not in this life. Our greatest hope is still in the life to come. The scripture describes how God has a new heaven and a new earth waiting for us. A place without this suffering and pain. Jesus said we live in the world, but we don't live like the world because we're not like it. We're not from here. He says, he says that we're kind of like foreigners. We're kind of like aliens. We're only passing through on our way to that eternal glory. What am I saying to you, my friends? Pain is temporary. 
Real quick, here's, here's a third truth that I believe can, can help us when we go through pain, and, and it's to think about the cross, to think about the cross. See, when you're tired and you feel like giving up, think about what Jesus did on the cross. When you feel like you can't take any more, just think about how Jesus was carrying his own cross to his crucifixion. Just think about it as on the way over there, he was beaten. He fell to the ground, but he got back up and he finished carrying that cross. When you feel like throwing in the towel, when you just say like, man, I just don't know how much longer I can hold on. Think about Jesus. There is something about thinking about the suffering of Christ. When you consider what Jesus did for you and I, it will bring you a a resurgence of strength and faith to keep on keeping on. (laughs) Hebrews chapter 12 says it like this. So let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Watch this. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith for the joy. Watch this. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. What is, what is God saying to us when you're in that moment and you say, I just don't know how much more I can go, Lord. I don't know if I can, if I can take any more pain in this cert- circumstance, situation. Think about the cross. Think about Jesus. And as you do, my friends, God's going to renew your strength so that you can keep going. Here's the last truth to help us in seasons of pain, and it's to always keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. You see, hope has power to sustain you through painful seasons. Hope has power. God has given us hope. Do you know that hope is the essence of faith? See, faith is 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 hope. Faith is is hoping. You know, when 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 we should have this hope for life. See, today you may have had a bad day, but I have hope that tomorrow's gonna be a better day. My body looks sick and ailing today, but I have hope that God can heal it still. My my relationship doesn't look good today, but I have hope that God can still turn it around. My business may have suffered during this season, but I have hope that God's still on the throne, that God is still my blesser, that God is still the God that can open up doors that no man can close. You see, that's living with hope. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says this. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You know what that means, my friends? It means that your strength is tied to your hope. Your strength is tied to your hope. Your strength, the strength that you and I can have today is tied up with our hope. And so that's why I encourage you, my friends, keep hope alive. And so as I close this series out, my friends, know that there's purpose in your pain. It's hard to see it when we're in it. It's hard to know what it's going to be. We ask the question, what's the purpose of this, Lord? What's the purpose of this pain? What's the purpose of this pandemic? We may not always know it in that moment, but just like Joseph, we can trust that God has a plan. And that although we go through a season where we're in the pit, God is going to bring us out and bring us to the palace. Come on. How many of y'all believe that and receive that with me today? Well, let, let, let me do this. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word that not only brings us insight, but brings us encouragement. Thank you, Lord, that when we go through seasons of pain, that, that, that we know that you're still in control. And that whatever the enemy has meant to harm us, that you'll turn it around and use it for good. Father, I pray for every one of us here today and every every person watching online, Lord God. Where they are weak, give them new strength, Father. Where they're down, lift them up. Where they need encouragement, bring that word of encouragement, Father. Keep hope alive 
in our heart, Father. Help us to know that that pain is temporary, Lord. That, that what lies ahead is still greater than the pain that we go through today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And amen. Well, listen, church. You know, we don't close our services without giving everyone an opportunity to, to come to faith in Christ, to step into this relationship with Jesus. See, that's why Jesus went to the cross. He didn't just go just, just to die. No, my friends, he went for you and for me. We needed a Savior, and Jesus is that Savior. We needed forgiveness, and Jesus paid for that forgiveness. We needed hope. And Jesus came to bring us hope. How do we respond to what Christ has done for us? Jesus didn't say, listen, go get your life all right. Go get it in order and then place your faith in me. No, he said, come to me just as you are. Come to me just as you are. And so I don't know where you're at here today or where you're at watching online, my friends. But Jesus came for you. Jesus loves you. He has a plan for your life. He knows the pain that you've gone through. He knows the pain that you're going through today, and he wants to walk with you. And so let's take a moment right now, right where you're at, and just, if that's you here today, my friend, you want to receive God's forgiveness for your sins, you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, right where you're at, just as a sign of faith, if you're here, just lift up your hand to the Lord, right where you're at, amen, amen, amen. God sees you if you're at home. He knows your heart. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's say this. Say this with me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I begin a new life. And so, Jesus, today, I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. Today, I commit my life to you. Now help me to learn about you, and to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, listen, if you have made that decision, whether that's today or recently, the Bible says this is a new day. This is a new season. God has begun something new in your life. The scripture says whatever God begins, he completes. And so I just want to encourage you, keep coming to church, keep tuning in online, talk to God every day of your life like you do to your friends, and just stay close to him. The Bible says to put God first, to seek him first, his kingdom, he says, and everything else shall be added unto you. And so thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for, for tuning in, for, you know, persevering during this season. Let's continue to do that. Let's continue to believe God that, that he's in control that all things are going to work together for good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys.